Walking through the streets of Addis Ababa, this is a common sight. Young boys trying to survive by shining shoes. Down the street, girls walk for miles, carrying eucalyptus leaves on their backs, barefoot at times. For all this work, these kids don't even make a dollar, usually just enough to buy a couple pieces of bread, which is the only meal they'll have. At a glance, Ethiopia's capital looks like any other city in the U.S., but once you see past the innocent faces, you can see a much darker side of one of the poorest countries in the world. 50% of children 6 to 14 years old don't have access to school. Those who do, many times, aren't allowed to go. It is free, but to send your children to school, they have to fulfill, they have to first uh, look after their parents, um, look after the house. So, but you know how many families can do that? So the children has to assist their parents. So that's why they don't go to school. Subla Kapede's educational background is rarely found in Addis. She considers herself one of the luckiest women in Ethiopia. Unlike millions in her country, she attended a private school, then went to Addis Ababa University, and she wishes every child could follow in her footsteps, but knows that's not possible and wants to see change. Education is the root for everything, like for growth, for, you know, for life education is life. Uh, of course it has to be encouraged and even all the donor agencies should focus on that. Well, we said priority is food, but still for the growth of the country, you know, everybody, the donors or the government should focus or concentrate on education. In 1997, this orphanage and school was built to make education a priority. The Ethiopian Children's Village is in Alaltu, about 50 miles from Addis Ababa. The orphanage was started with only about 80 kids and now has grown to more than 300. Children are not only educated here, but receive clothing, are fed, even get health care. A handful of kids, like seven-year-old Gose, have AIDS. The school pays for his medication and doctor's visits. The AIDS epidemic in Ethiopia has prompted 14-year-old Daniel to want to become a doctor. I want to be a doctor. Okay, why? Because in Ethiopia, they have, uh, they have uh, a lot of people that have HIV AIDS. So I, can, I, I will help them. Going to school is also helping him stay on the right track. Like his friends, he has some friends who are on the street now. Some of them are in Addis, some of them are in, in Aliltu. And some of them uh, have got some um, bad habits like smoking and chewing chat. So if he had not had that chance, he would have been doing the same thing. The Ethiopian Children's Fund was started to care for deprived children and those who suffer from extreme poverty and diseases. Even though AIDS is thought to have originated in Africa, its first case was discovered in the U.S. more than 20 years ago. Because lack of education, the disease continues to spread. It's not surprising if, even if you find some people very close, living very close to Addis and uh, knowing nothing about HIV. Uh, the other thing is uh, you find some people uh, who, who know about AIDS, but they don't know how it is really transmitted. In hopes of preventing the spread of HIV AIDS, ECF has trained 75 people to go out and teach villagers about the deadly disease. This future singer and dancer stands out not only because she can sing, but because at 14 she isn't married and doesn't have any children. Early marriage is practiced in most parts of Ethiopia. I like come school and learn. I don't like marriage. They get married at the age of 9 and they stay with their families after they are celebrating the wedding. They go to their families. The girl, the, the bride will go to her families and she will be staying there for about two years. At the age of 11, 10, 11 12, she goes back to her new husband and she will maybe might have started her first child at the age of 13 or 14. While it's called an orphanage in school, none of the kids live there. Instead, they live here, in houses made of mud and grass with their parents or extended family members. Poverty oozes from every corner of the hut. There are no floors, just dirt. Pieces of newspaper hang from the walls. There are no showers, no stove. 
People bathe and wash their clothing in rivers and springs. They also drink this water. Waterborne diseases are one of the most common health threats, especially for young children. However, the school children do have clean well water to drink when they come to class. This is one of the very poorest countries in the world, you know, so uh, they have a, 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 a a GDP, as it's called, right, of $100 per person, you know, which is less than half than even the neighboring poor countries of Kenya and Tanzania. To give you an idea of how the richest country in the world is doing, the GDP per person in the United States is $40,000. The gross domestic product is used to gauge how a country is doing economically. At the moment, we have 310 children. Uh, the optimum goal is to have 500 children. Uh, we'll be having grace up to 10. In each class, we'll be having about 40, 40 children. Even though public education is free in Ethiopia, students still have to buy school supplies. Many families are too poor to even buy the basic supplies. As a result, their children don't go to school. Most of the kids would have been uh, out in the street. School supplies are provided for all of the children at the orphanage. The Ethiopian Children's Fund is a non-governmental organization. If this school wasn't built in Aleithu, the next public school is about an hour away. This would have left these kids with no chance at an education. Money to pay for uniforms, health care, food and running the school mainly comes from dairy farming and fundraisers. ECF is trying to expand its farm so it doesn't have to rely on fundraisers. Definitely the one that you saw, um, they have a very good purpose, they have very good quality and I think they are an excellent complement to, to what is happening. We touched on some of the reasons why kids aren't educated in Ethiopia, poverty and the culture. The Ethiopian Children's Fund's priority is to give children a chance to get an education to better their lives and help them work their way out of poverty. Educating children, it's one of the few ways of changing the poorest country in the world. By doing that, these kids will never have to grow up and make a living like this.